Hi guys, this is Chef Jin Academy. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the effective weight of T and L beam using the BS8110 design approach. I've already created a content on effective weight of T flange beam on YouTube, but in that video, I make use of the Euro code. And some of the people that actually viewed that video requested me to create a video on similar topic but using the BS8110 and that is why I'm making this video. So just like we've explained, a flange beam is a little bit different from a rectangular beam due to the need for us to calculate the effective width. So most of these flange beam are common in whenever you have a connection of slab and beam. So in that case, there's need for you to determine the your beam, either your beam is L beam or your beam is T beam. And this actually occurs when a beam is constructed monolithically with the slab. So in that case, some part of the slab we tends to behave as the beam. So we can also find some example in precast members, just like the way we have in the picture on the right hand side. So how do you now determine the effective width of L and T beam, which is also known as the flange beam? We all know that a flange beam actually have two part which is the web the web is the part below the slab and also the other part which is the part of the slab that contributed to the beam which is the flanges so this flange width is important and it is needed to be calculated in order for us to be able to design the beam so the effective width of flange beam is actually simple Looking at this diagram, we can understand that for an L beam, all you need to determine is for the, for you to get the BW is to get, for you to get the effective width of flange, which is the BF, is to get the DW and add it to the extension part of the slab. So then for a T beam, because this beam is connected to both the left and right hand side. So in that case, the effective width of that beam, we have to be computed by considering the left side slab and the right hand side slab. But according to BS8110, you can actually find the formula for if you can find the formula for effective width of a flange beam in clause 3.4.1.5. And this is quite very straightforward compared to the Euro code. So it states that in the absence of any more accurate determination, so this should be determined by using this formula for T beam, you have your effective width to be equal to the web width plus LZ over 5 or the actual flange width. So I'm going to be explaining what do we mean by this actual flange width and also for an L beam, the effective width can be computed by adding the web width plus LZ over 10. So LZ is defined as the distance between point of zero moment. For those of you that actually watch the video on zero code, you know I've already explained what we mean by this LZ, the distance between point of zero moment. And even though the hero code even go more explicit and broaden it by showing you a series of diagram for you to be able to determine LZ. Then the BS code stated that for a continuous beam, you may take this value to be 0 0.7. And if you look at the Euro code, you see that it's something similar for a continuous beam. In this case, you can use your, you can use a factor of 0 0.7 times the effective span of that beam to determine the LZ. So let's continue. So definitely now, in order for you to determine the effective flange of T and L beam based on BS8110, you know that your effective width is going to be the actual flange width, which must be less than or equals to BW plus LZ over 10. This is for an L beam. Then for a T beam, it must be LZ over 5. So and then we will know that LZ is the distance between point of zero moment based on the clause in the BSA 2110 part 1 that I just showed you now. So to get more in-depth knowledge on detailing, I have a course on Udemy titled Structural Detailing of Reforced Concrete using AutoCAD. In this course, I'm going to show you step by step how you can use AutoCAD in order to detail solid slab, 
raft slab, RC column, staircases, how also how to detail irregular shape slab, slab with openings, how to detail RC beam, shear wall, foundations, both part footing, combined footing, raft slab, and also how to prepare by bending schedule. Then another amazing part of this is you are also going to learn how to correctly place structural drawings into sheet using AutoCAD with the correct scale. So this course is about nine hours video and you have a lot of articles and downloadable resources attached to the course. So this is really amazing. If you are really interested in learning the, the, the real detailing, then you should try and take this course. I will leave the link in the description of this video. So you can check the link of the description of this video to get the course. So let's take an example. Let's say we have a general arrangement of this. This is a floor plan where we have a structural layout of a plan. We have slab and the thickness of the slab is 150 each. Then we are, let's say we wanted to determine the, we want to design beam F b1 which is size is 225 by 450 and then we want to determine we want to design the beam between grid line 3 and 5 so let's say we wanted to determine the effective width of this beam so what we have to do is we, we have to first of all estimate or bring out some of the parameters of the beam so we want to determine the effective width of a beam for beam F beam O1, which is between grid line 3 and 5. This is actually a continuous beam. You can see the beam started from grid line 1 and ends at grid line 8. So the part of it in which we want to determine the effective width is between grid line 3 and 5. So what we have to do is we know that the BW of the beam, because the beam is 225 by 450, definitely the web of that beam is 225 based from the dimensioning of the beam then the next thing we have to calculate is our span what is the span of this beam the span of this beam is between grid line 3 and 5 which is the second grid so if you look at the section of the beam we are expected to determine for the second span which is 4800 so definitely the span of the beam is 4800 and because the beam is a continuous beam, definitely you can say LZ is 0 0.7 times the span of the beam. The span of the beam is just the distance between the center grid line. So we can take it to be 3360. So now we need to determine the actual flange width. For us to be able to determine the actual flange width, we have to look at a section of this beam. When you cut a section of the beam this way, this is the section of the beam. This is what you are going to be seeing. You see that we have, this is the beam we wanted to design for, which is this beam. The grid line A, yeah. And then we also have the attached beam, which is this beam, beam F beam O3, which is beam, this beam here. What you have to do is for you to determine the effective width, the width of a beam, you have to add it because this beam is a T beam. You can see this is the beam. It's connected to a slab. It's connected to panel 5, which is this slab, cantilever slab, as well as panel 2. So in that way, you need to add half of panel 1 and half of, half of panel 3 and half of panel 2. Sorry, because this cantilever slab is panel 5. So you need to add up half of panel 5 plus half of panel 2. But because panel 5 is a cantilever slab, so you have to take the whole length. So definitely the actual width of this beam is the whole length of the cantilever slab, which is this, plus half of the length of the second panel 2. Because panel 2 is not a cantilever slab, it's a solid slab. So we just take half, half of it. So that's why we have 5560 five, divided by 2. We didn't take half of the, the, this one because this is a cantilever slab attached to it. So definitely at the end of the day, we have 3893 millimeters. So now to determine the effective width, we know BW is 225. 
then we know our LZ to be 3360. All you have to do is just slot in it into that formula. Because we are dealing with a T-beam, so we have B effective, which will be less than 225 plus 3360 divided by 5. Divided by 5 because it's a T-beam. So you have to make any... The effective width is now going to be the lesser between these two, between the left-hand side of the inequalities and the right hand side of the inequalities so then we know that be which was already calculated from the previous slide to be 333893 3, 3, 3, so if we do this computation you have 225 plus 672 if we divide this by 5 this is what we are going to have so at the end of the day we have 3893 and 897 so you have to pick the lesser between the two because what the code states is it has to be the web width plus LZ over 5 or the actual flange width if less. So if the actual flange width is less than this computation, then you use the actual flange width. But if the actual flange width is greater than this computation, you go with the computation. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, our B effective is now going to be 897 millimeters. So this is how to compute the effective width of either a T-beam or an L-beam using BS8110. You can compare the result with Eurocode. Thank you. See you next time.